This is another Rider Cast, Agito edition. So this is Matthew. I'm back again to talk about uh, Kamen Rider Agito this time. Uh, I'll be talking about the uh, premise, the design, and the characters, the cast. Um, so first of all, the premise looks like uh, it's basically this. That the uh, well, actually, first I'm going to talk about all the meta information. So hold on. Kamen Rider Agito has 51 episodes. Uh, apparently, there was one movie and uh, two specials. It was written by uh, Toshigi Inoue and um, <laughs> Yakuso Kobayashi. And it turns out that Kobayashi wrote episode 28, while Inoue wrote the other 50 episodes, which I find rather impressive. Via the writer wiki, it's unclear who the lead director was, but Ryuta uh, Tasaki's at the top, followed by uh, Takao. Nagaishi, Shunji, uh, Mugaruma, uh, Hidenori Ishida, uh, Nobuhiro Suzurama, uh, let's see, there's a Takemitsu Sato, Osamu Kaneda, and a Katsuya Watanabe as well. Agito ran from January 28, 2001 to January 27, 2002, and Toei Company is listed as the producer. The first episode is called The Warrior's Awakening, and the second episode is called Blue Storm. Here's a quick shout out to the uh, suit actors. Agito was played by Seiji Takawa, who's played every writer, main writer since then. Uh, let's see, G3 is an Ito Makoto. Uh, Kamen Rider Gills, who we don't see in the show yet, is uh, Oshiki, Oshikawa uh, Yoshifumi. And uh, I won't read the other ones, because I think they're spoilers for later. So it struck me as funny looking up the um, opening and ending songs. You only hear the opening after watching the first or the second episode. It's it's in there. You don't hear the closing in either. Um, but uh, they have different singers. But I think it's the same exact composer and um, lyricist or guy who wrote the lyrics as uh, Kamen Rider Kuga and uh, Into the Blue Sky. So that's kind of interesting. And then it's weird to me that they downplay the ending song so much. And I remember hearing um, other people complain uh, in writer fandom about the fact that they don't really let you hear the ED anymore and you have to like look it up on CDs or OSTs or whatever. Um, and that's just kind of a funny thing. Okay, now it is time to talk about the premise. Agito takes place two years after Kuga. A mysterious puzzle like Relic surfaces in Nagano. A series of grisly murders puts the police's G3 unit up against the unknown monsters more powerful than the unidentified life forms G3 was made to beat. Those are the ones that Kuga fought. An amnesiac turned homemaker becomes Agito and destroys these monsters. And presumably he must continue to fight them. Um, so that's really the, the shortest bit of the synopsis I could give you. But it kind of spins out from there because the show is obviously pointing towards covering three people as, like, main characters who carry the story forward. You've got Hikawa, who um, operates the G3 unit for the police, um, the special division of the police, um, and he has his own challenges, uh, besides the fact that his weapons are ineffective against uh, the unknown. Um, you've got Shoichi, who has lost his memory and um, is somehow called to fight them, and... Uh, I think I'll talk about him a little more in a bit. Um, and then you've got... Uh, well, I know I will. <laughs> anyway, and then you've got Ryo, who becomes Gills, uh, you know, which I'm not supposed to know, but I think it's pretty obvious, even if you know the name was Gills, that that guy's going to become Gills. Because, uh, you yeah, know, the OP shows it. But anyway, uh, yeah, so that's the premise. Um, I think it's a pretty good premise. Uh, I like how it ties back into Kuga, how the unknown are more powerful or at least different, like a different class of monster or whatever from um, the unidentified life forms. And uh, that's pretty neat. And it's funny. Um, somebody in episode two mentions, you know, this relic with the, all these dials on it being um, ancient. And they're like, ancient? Like, ancient's not even, uh, ancient doesn't even cover it. Where we know that, you know, Kuga um, was dealing with an ancient, you know, belt and, and, you know, race that was sealed away and whatever. Um, but I mean, to me, it, it speaks to, uh, the fact that the threat in Agito is even older and, uh, I don't know about more sinister, but older, um, which is kind of neat. Um, and it's interesting how, uh, well, anyway, I, I'll stop now and I'll, I'll move on. 
Okay, so onto the cast. I gotta say, the cast felt huge. Uh, there are almost three separate casts to consider. I'll start with Ryo, who later becomes Gills. Uh, next, Ozawa and Hikawa. Finally, Shuichi and his adoptive family. So, Ryo, the swimmer, he's got his swim coach. We don't get to see much of them. Uh, we see his doctor, I guess, who's taking care of him or, or you know, who's monitoring his case. And uh, that's really all we get from him. Uh, I mean, I feel badly for the guy. Uh, you know, he's gearing up for this big championship. And uh, apparently he'd been in a car accident before, and then he's, you know, hospitalized after being injured. And it's interesting because you can tell that, you know, what's happening to him is connected to what's happening to uh, Shuichi and these um, these unknowns. Because every time they do their weird wavy hand thingy, uh, when they're going to murder somebody, uh, something happens. Which kind of begs the question, when they murdered the, the boy um, before his mother and father uh, from the first episode... Yeah, first episode. Um, like, had they, uh, had they, um, had something happened to, to Rio then? I don't know, it's just kind of interesting, but he seemed like an, a nice guy. Um, I'm interested to see what happens with him. Uh, and that's really all I have to say about Rio. So, as, uh, Ozawa and Hikawa are working with the police there in a special unit. They have another guy on their team whose name I don't know, don't remember. Um, I don't know how much focus he'll get later in the series, but anyway. So neither here nor there. Um, and then there's Hojo, who who factors into their story. Too. He's a detective from, like, I, don't, I think he's homicide, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, but he doesn't like uh, Hikawa, and he challenges him and pushes back against him. And um, Hikawa, like, pushes back against him, and he tries to deal with him, uh, like, honorably or, like, in a respectful way, but he still, like, really stands his ground against the guy because he's being so unkind to him, such a jerk. Um, but, uh, yeah, I like the vibe between Ozawa and Hikawa. Like, it feels like they've known each other for a long time. It feels like they have a lot of mutual respect. Um, it just feels like they, they feel like equals or partners or whatever, and they're working together to make this G3 happen to make sure that people are protected from anything crazy like they had faced before without having to deal or depend upon a, uh, you know, random... Uh, I mean, they still think Kuga was an unidentified life form, too, uh, that just turned against the others. So without having to rely on anybody else like that, they want to be able to protect people. And, uh, you know, you get to see him do some detective work, and you see Ozawa, um, like, messing with the tech and trying to, um, like, give him the help and support that he needs and stuff as the, like, scientist behind the uh, G3 stuff. Um I just, I like them. I, I like the two of them together. They have good chemistry, and uh, they balance um, well against Hojo. I mean, Ozawa, I don't really get to see or interact with Hojo so much in this one, but um, it felt like because she and Hikawa are pretty much on the same page that uh, she would have dealt with him similarly. Um, but the guy is, you know, easy to dislike. But one thing I did appreciate about, appreciate about him is that when he saw these... Uh, Cheetah guys, he automatically knew, like, wait, hold on, something's wrong. He calls in for backup for the from the uh, you know G three unit or whatever. So that was cool. So the remainder of the cast is Shuichi and his adoptive family, and uh, I'm gonna start with the little brother. I'm gonna assume this guy's the professor's son. Um, he seems cool. Uh, it's funny how much uh, smack he gives uh, Shuichi. Like the the bickering or whatever uh, communicates like a like a familial uh, closeness and a familiarity because, you know, familiarity breeds contempt and all that. Uh, so, I mean, like, that was a positive thing I felt. Um, like, I felt like these people really have been together for some time after he lost his memories and was taken in by um, the professor. Like, I don't understand why the professor took him in. Um, I feel a little bit of a... <clears throat> a like the potential for a budding romance between uh, the niece, the professor's niece, whose name I didn't catch, and Shuichi. And, you know, I'm okay with that being explored. I think it's kind of interesting. I don't know what their age difference is. I mean, that, you know, that matters. She's She looks like she's in high school, but I can't quite tell, um, just based on, like, her, her uniform. Uh, I don't think they do those in the colleges, but I don't know. For sure, I'm not a, uh, you know, Japanologist, so I couldn't tell you. Um, let's see. So, the professor... Um, He's kind of an interesting guy, and I really want to get to know more about him. I liked uh, what I saw of him so far. Um, it was funny. There, They had that like nice comedic moment where uh, he was going to skip dinner because Shuichi was going to be cooking again. And it's apparent... Well, I don't think it's because Shuichi's cooking is bad. I think it's because, uh, like they talk about later, that uh, you know it's going to be spinach for the next month. Um, that he grows, you know, all these great vegetables in their garden, and then he just he keeps using them because, you know, why not? Um, and that's kind of, a, kind of a funny thing. Um... 
Now to talk about Shuichi himself, he is a little, he seems reticent to know who he is or who he was before he lost his memories. And he has that conversation with the, the young lady who lives there in the house, the professor's niece. And, um, he, uh, yeah, it's interesting. He doesn't, he kind of doesn't want to know who he is. Um, I don't think he really is cognizant of this whole Agito thing happening to him really. Um, and it's funny. He, It's just, it's a really funny situation that they're in where he is in debt to this guy because he took him in when he's, am, you know, has amnesia. And, uh, so, like, he cooks, he cleans, he grows food for them. Um, he does all this stuff. And I, you know, jokingly ta- said that, you know, he's a, you know, amnesiac turned um, homemaker or whatever because um, he kind of is. And there's nothing wrong with that. I, I kind of think it's neat, actually. Um, and I'd be interested to see how that changes throughout the course of the series because I would imagine that he would gain some of his memories back uh, as time goes on because it would probably be relevant to the plot. Um, I would assume he's some sort of special person. Uh, It was interesting um, because he's... Would I say he's called? Maybe he's called. Like, where did his belt come from? I don't know. He just had this... While these guys are doing their finger wavy thing, he gets like a headache and there's this trauma and there's this light glowing at his navel or, you know, at his belt line and then, boom, the belt appears on him and he goes and fights and transforms and that's just... It's a weird thing. Um, I don't quite understand what they're doing with this character or what's going on, but I'm intrigued by uh, what's been set up there. And uh, I liked him with the professor. I liked him with the little brother. I liked him with the niece. Um, like she joked about him marrying her if he was turned out to be some super rich guy uh, before his amnesia. And he's like, look, some things are better not to know. Like, don't, I don't want to go there with you, lady, uh, which was funny. Uh, one more thing about Shuichi. I'm watching the Gomen Rider subs, and in it, I, I believe he is guilty of making dad jokes. Like, I think he makes, like, two or three over the course of the two episodes, um, which is pretty bad. Uh, and he, he seems to get a kick out of it, and everybody just kind of, like, rolls their eyes and sighs. And I think that's pretty funny. Again, we have multiple factions to discuss with design. Gills is excluded here because he doesn't show up in these episodes. So I'm going to talk about the G3 unit, the Unknown, and the Agito. <sighs> so I really like the uh, tech van that they have for G3. It's pretty cool that they can just roll up the wagon and deploy to wherever he Hikawa is and equip him there. And uh, they show it off in a really cool way in the show. Um, and just, I like it. It's, it's exciting. It's cool that they have the... Like the special key for the motorcycle, uh, Zawa gives to him and he inserts it into the bike. And then he's able to back it off of the truck and that's all really cool. Um, it's just a super neat idea. And to specify, I think it's really cool that inside of his bike he has stored uh, different weapons and accessories. So uh, the first thing he pulls out is a sword. And then he ends up pulling out that um, almost like a a rocket launcher, but like a grenade launcher type gun. And that's able to match, um, the, uh, cheetah guys, uh, (laughs) arrow. And I wonder if, uh, that's a sign that the technology will be able to match or defeat them. Cause like if that had hit the cheetah guy's body instead of his arrow, like what would that have done to him? I don't know. Maybe it would have defeated him. Maybe it would have seriously injured him and given him, Uh, giving G3 another shot, a pretty good shot at making it happen, but, I mean, we'll never know now, but it's just, it's cool to think about. So after considering the fight at the end, I want to talk about um, the Unknowns and uh, Shuichi or Agito at the same time. Um, So he's, you know, the light happens and he's called again and he transforms without saying anything. He just kind of sees them and he... Uh, or after he hops off his bike and he automatically knows to transform and he's got this shining light on his waist and it's coming out of his belt and it had appeared there before uh, without his belt and, and that's when he ran off from uh, gardening. Um, and it's interesting to me because I noticed that the cheetahs when they were doing something like when they were doing their finger thingy when they were killing the people that they were targeting it looked like the halos or swirling lights would appear over their heads. And then he's got a halo or swirling light coming out of this belt that comes out of this light that appears in front of him. And then he, um, 
is punching them and fighting them and he transforms. Uh, and then like later we see they, you know, one of them pulls out a bow and arrow or yeah, bow and arrow from this halo above its head. And then the other one pulls out a, uh, staff, um, like a bladed, I don't know if it's a quarter staff or what. I'm not that familiar with weapons. Um, I guess maybe it's a spear. And then he's fighting with Agito and, uh, he gets up behind him and then Agito pulls out something from a ju the jewel on his belt, in fact, and then he form changes to this blue form where the staff that he pulled out of his belt gets longer. Um, so, again, linking them together, you've, you've got that, there's like this light, this swirling light, um, and even the, if you look at the belt when it's static, the way it's designed, the shaping on it, or the, the design on it, it makes it look like it's swirling, like the swirls over their heads. And to me, it feels like they're very connected in that way. And they also have little crystals embedded in their foreheads, just like Agito does. And it changes forms with him, I guess. Um, I'm going to break out of talking about design because I think I basically covered it. And I want to talk about um, like a thematic thing uh, or the show overall, I guess I should say. Um, and I think that the show... It's interesting because um, Shoichi or Soichi seems so much different than Kuga in that um, like Kuga's really reluctant to fight and he's hesitant about mm -hmm. being so deadly and destructive and yet uh, and Soichi uh, on the other hand is like it's like it's not even him it's like he becomes something else when he's Agito and he's just like mercilessly destroying these guys and we don't get to see how it weighs on him at all because at the end of the second episode he. Um, G3 comes up to him and he just attacks him. Um, he doesn't say anything. He doesn't ask questions. Um, he just looks at him for a couple seconds, clenches his fist, and then rushes the guy. So, you know, who knows what's going to happen there or, or you know, why. Um, so I thought that was pretty interesting. So to wrap up my final thoughts or my general thoughts on Agito uh, 1 and 2, um, looks like a really intriguing series. Um, I'm very interested in... The mystery of what's going on with this ancient relic. I'm interested in learning about these bad guys. It does feel a little samey as Kuga being that it's an ancient thread and it's these unknown slash, you know, the unknowns are like the unidentified life forms in a way, but the uh, bigger cast and the story that looks like it's going to be split up into three among three writers seems really interesting. And um, I, I think it's pretty compelling. Um, it's very, it feels a lot darker almost. Well, it feels, yeah, it feels a lot darker, like with the corpses being hung in trees and stuff like that, at least in the first episode or first and second episode. And then like the, I think it's Miss Suzuki, like being killed, like murdered right in front of the, uh, of the audience. It was, a, uh, it was kind of tough. I didn't like that, um, so much. I don't think I'm scared or anything, but you know, it's just kind of gruesome and grotesque and I'm really surprised this was a kid show. Um, Yeah. So that's all I have to say about Kamen Rider Agito. I'm really interested in, to, in watching it in the future. Uh, we'll see when that happens, but uh, I think it's it looks like it'll be really good. Thank you for your time and attention. I'd love to do more of this. Like, share, and subscribe to cheer me on, or give me feedback to make me stronger and smarter. Visit luminousbeings.blog for more. I link everything I do there, so if you want to comment, that's the place where I'll definitely see it.